Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are continuing this conversation about um, uh, the lies. Uh, we talked about um, false, false uh, uh, doctrine, false religion, and then we talked about Jesus being the cure for the uh, condition of mankind. That is why he can say, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He took care of the condition. So then we looked at how um, how Jesus defeated the enemy. We show first that the enemy is a liar, and every situation that comes to us that is contrary to the Word of God is a it's it's a lie, and it is designed to um, teach us something. The Scripture tells us that tribulation worketh patience, and patience so uh, virtuous. So it tells us that the character of the enemy is being used to beautify you and I. Uh, but what happens to many of us is that we panic and we get out of faith because we know that faith is the way by which one wins in utilize, utilizing the Word of God. Uh, we saw that uh, the Word of God itself, the Bible tells us that the Word of God is truth and sanctify them in thy truth, your word is truth. We looked at also in Psalms where we saw that the word of God protects us and so forth. And um, we are now seeing that we have to um, introduce truth into every situation that is contrary to the word of God or every uh, situation that is brought into our life that is a lie. And we combat that. We had an example. We looked at the example of when Jesus was tempted um, in the book of Luke, we saw that in Luke, and then I saw, I believe it was Matthew chapter 4 also, that talks about the same situation. Luke, uh, being a physician, he said that he was tempted for 40 days. Um, in Matthew, it just said after um, he uh, after he got to 40 uh, uh, days, he then the enemy tempted him. So in either case, um, it shows the character of the enemy. Number one, it shows that he was relentless in the book of Luke, meaning that he was coming at him on a daily basis. And the other, um, in Matthew, we see he, he's an opportunist where he waited until he was weak. So it doesn't matter. That's how the enemy will come to you anyway. He'll come to you relentlessly, and he will also come to you when you are weak. So when I see stuff like that in the Bible, I never allow it to dislodge my faith from believing or there's an error and all those kind of stuff. Theories are two different men, and the idea is the same. The main theme is that the enemy was tempting Jesus. Now, the details as to which uh, these men, how they saw it and how they wrote it down, that's different because, again, Luke being a physician, he would be more detailed than Matthew, um, who is not uh, that type of a detailed type of person. If you look and see his profession was different than that of Luke. And so I can see Luke making, you know, step by step by step and mentioning it versus uh, someone like Matthew just putting it all in there. But in either case, it shows us that the enemy is, he re he's relentless, number one, in Luke, in Matthew, he's an opportunist in the sense that he will come when you are weak, and he does both. So we see that Jesus Christ had suffered, uh, was tempted, he had suffered, Hebrews 2, 18, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So that's why Jesus um, won, and he showed us the example by which we can win, and he interjected, he introduced the truth into lies that the enemy will come. And because of its, its lying, he will always approach you with a question. And the question, if you look at how Jesus uh, the question when he came to Jesus, the question about uh, when he came to um, Eve, uh, he came to all the people in the Bible. Uh, the questions that he came was simply to dislodge them from their faith and from their believing in God. And when you um, take the thought, Jesus says, take no thought, saying, when you allow that thought to stop, and you began to switch your focus on the thoughts of the enemy telling you that you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're going to die, and all these different things, you're broke, you're poor, all of these different things. When you switch your focus from the Word of God and began to uh, focus on that particular 
lie that he's telling you, that will become the the um, the inf- information, if you will, that you're going to start meditating on. And I've told you guys, you and I meditate day and night. We are uh, meditating as we're working. We're meditating. There's some theme that you are thinking about when you are working that is behind in your subconscious. If you stop, you'll know. And that is your meditation. And what you and I are called to do is when those lies come into play that we need to then interject the Word of God. Do not agree with it. Say, no, I am this because I died to that in that previous kingdom. But in this kingdom, I am this. And uh, you confess that and it will switch. We talked about um, uh, faith comes by hearing. It doesn't come by listening. And uh, you and I have to um, migrate or navigate from the space of listening to the space of hearing. And when we hear the Word of God, the Bible tells us that we will then uh, walk in faith and get our desired outcome. So so the reason why I'm, I'm this thread, I'm working with you guys to show you that, okay, now you're tempted. Now, um, what does God want to do with you since he is, he, he, I showed you that the enemy, uh, he has his false teachers, false doctrine, false religions. Uh, we saw that Jesus is the one that um, uh, is the cure for that um, ailment that is of man, which is sin. He is the only way. That's why he's the only one that um, made the sacrifice needed to um, to uh, break, buy back. And we know that sacrifice was his life, but it was also his obedience when he defeated the enemy as um, the last Adam. The first Adam failed his test. And he disobeyed uh, God. The second, the last Adam passed his test and he was obedient to God. Remember when he said in the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. So the last Adam, his obedience was the key to um, uh, reconstruct everything or put everything back in place. So now that you and I are born again, we are confessing to be Christians. And we see these fake people out there, as I mentioned to you. These are men and women that are calling themselves Christian nationalists and our politicians of today. Listen to what they are saying and compare what they are saying to the Word of God and how they behave because the Bible tells us you shall know them by their fruit. So you and I are born again. So what's that mean? It means that we are the children of God. And we have been, um, our spirit man has been renewed. The Bible tells us that we are new creatures. And as new creatures on this uh, planet, in this world, but not of this world, we have assignments to do. God wants you and I to understand that when we came here, when we were born into the womb of our mom and dad, God knew us before that. So you and I came with an assignment. The scripture is full of that. I actually uh, spend a lot of time studying and talking to you guys before we were born, what was going on. And so you and I came with an assignment, and it is up to us to find that gift that is deposited in us because God wants us to do things. John fourteen twelve it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whosoever believe in me will also do the works that I do. So what did Jesus do? Jesus told us in Isaiah 61 what he came here to do, set the captives free, lay hands on the sick, and, and all of those things which he did. You and I are supposed to do the same. We are to raise the dead. We are to um, be calling out people when they die and say, Lazarus, come forth. We are to be walking on water. We are to be um, telling the fish to bring the money out of the water like he did. He, he, Peter says, we got to pay our taxes, Jesus. Jesus says, go down to the river. The fish is going to come up, get you your money, pay both your taxes and mine. So this is how we are supposed to be living by faith. And outside of faith, you see these men are just accumulating wealth, but they are not walking by faith in the sense where you now need to be able to distribute that because Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. And so we see a lot of these men are hoarding this money, fancy house, nice plane, everything. And there are people in their church that are suffering poor, broke, and in debt, losing their houses and all of these things. And those men and women that have been taking from them for all those years have not deposited a cent into those people that um, uh, God had called them to give as well. Because it says if you find your brother in need, you ought to be helping your brother. 
So we know that we are supposed to be doing the works that he did. And he makes a statement, and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. So we got to do some work. And so we are not um, saved to become members in a church. And you guys hear me harp about that all the time because it is something I actually hate. Um, the fact that uh, um, the church is so um, bound on making us make and uh, make members that they have forgotten the call uh, that Jesus said, go and make disciples. There's a difference. There's a big difference. Disciples change the world. So what Jesus' disciples did. And so members will stay in your church and pay your money and be obedient and not do anything. But the disciple is going to get out there and start winning souls, is going to start operating from the gift that they were given to operate from, and they're going to become independent of you, and uh, in the sense where they're not locked into that church and coming every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday, every day, and not doing anything, die, um, go to heaven, and haven't done anything. And I think that is the great sin of the church, is that we are so focused on members that we forget our assignment to create disciples. But they would have to deal with, with God and not me. And because he's very se serious about that uh, uh, situation as to um, becoming the light of the world, because the Bible tells us that we are. Matthew 5, 14 says you are the light of the world. So then if you are the light of the world, then you have something to give you have something that is needed light is needed in a dark place a city set on a hill cannot be hidden so you're not supposed to be hiding inside the church if you are born again you're supposed to be out there changing your neighborhood changing your your neighbor your your street changing your your town changing your 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 you know, area you see this thing that is happening within the, the the uh, politics today, and you see the men and women um, going after these people with their hatred, transgender, they're going after, quote-unquote, these are the defenders of Jesus Christ, the defenders of Christianity, being evil and, and spiteful and hateful and all these types of stuff, going after these people, when the Bible tells us that we ought to be loving them. And so if you are not hiding in church, you would become effective and you'd be able to show the love that you are getting from the Father, your relationship with God and Jesus Christ to your neighbor. And you and your neighbor can then create little uh, communities that you can start running for uh, local uh, uh, positions and deal with it on a spiritual basis and begin to pray for your neighbor, your, your village, your town and so forth. But because the church is not praying and you have these evil men and women coming up claiming to be stealing the spotlight, claiming to be Christians and behaving like their father because they can't help it. He says that they lie from their character. So we know that whatever evil they're doing is because it's their character. So um, you and I are the light of the world. And in order for us to change the world, we have to come outside and uh, we have to be able to bring God to the, the, the people. This thing about uh, these uh, people, about, uh, um, you know, abortions and killing kids and all this kind, that's a smokescreen, guys. That, it's a spiritual problem within the church. I, I'm telling you, all this abortion, the natural stuff that we're seeing and this, this crazy stuff that has happened, that's a spiritual condition that is in the church. There's abortions in the church. There's all the things you see naturally that is happening there is the condition of the church and the church has allowed that and so now you have politicians who are trying to be champions of gods that are evil and they're claiming and doing and behaving all these things and causing tremendous harm in the name of the church just like constantine did tremendous harm in the name of church so you have to be very careful this is a spiritual problem the bible says that the church has the keys to the kingdom what is the keys whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in the heavenly whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in the heavenly so you and i have the authority to stop whatever is going on in the heavenly and then when we stop it there, it will not manifest in the natural. But because the church is sick, because the church is prejudiced, because the church is hateful, because the church is uh, all of these things, and there's racism in the church, all of these things are in the church, in the body of Christ. 
And because it's there, it is spilling over into the streets and it's causing pain. And God says in the scriptures that you need to deal with your house first before you can fix it out there. So when we lost um, church school prayer and all that type of stuff way back then, that's because the church wasn't praying. That's because all of this stuff that is happening in the society that is claiming to be a Christian society, that should be a shame um, that these uh, people are claiming that, that they're a Christian society. If you claim to be a Christian society and you're behaving the way you are, caging people and doing all this stuff because people are different colors and, and all these things, that's a shame on you. You are absolutely disgusting that if you are saying that and you're claiming to be a Christian, that is a disgusting religion that I wouldn't want to be in. If that's what you're claiming, but God is not interested in you. He's interested in the body of Christ, those that are calling themselves Christians and propagating hate and, and uh, to people that are of different color and, and all these things because God made those colors. It is absolutely atrocious, but these people are evil to the core. So please do not allow them to lead you and your family astray because God is going to judge you for it. So now that you are saved, God wants to work for you. He wants to use you to do his will on this planet. He wants you to love those that are, he calls in the other kingdom, the children of, of disobedience. You and I were a part of that kingdom until the word of God entered into our, our mind, our soul, opened our understanding, and we understand that Jesus Christ died for our condition because we noticed it. We tried to be good. We did all the things. We kept trying and trying and failing. But Jesus healed the condition. So when Jesus did that, we recognize it. We become born again. We have been translated into a new kingdom. That's what happened, guys. And God wants you to do the same thing for your neighbor and your friends, your family, and all of those different things and the world. But you and I have to spend time before God. Why? Because we're going to make an exchange of this hateful behavior, this nature that is in the soul. And we're going to start implementing and putting the word, depositing the word into our soul, man, so that he can be saved, he can be renewed. So that when our crazy neighbors come, when our crazy family, brothers and sisters come, and we are no longer going to respond out of anger and hate and spitting fire at them. When we start uh, responding with them from the, a place of love, they're going to look at you and I and go, what happened to you? Um, what happened to you? And then you will have an opportunity to say, man, you know what? You know me. Um, I am. I'm, I got born again. I, 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 uh, Jesus, I accepted Jesus. I understand that the condition that I was in the state. And so when we start preaching the gospel about the condition as to the reasons why one needs Jesus Christ, uh, then you can have this insightful conversation with that individual. And so when we begin to preach the gospel in that way, then you they may understand, they, they will begin to understand the reason as to why Jesus said, no man comes to the Father by me without me. is because no other belief system has dealt with the condition of mankind, the sinful nature. And um, Jesus was able to do that on our behalf because he loved us. And uh, so when we explain that, when we become born again and we see the wretchedness in us, we can only uh, learn how to forgive ourselves and we forgive others as we spend time with God. But God wants to work through you. And so the next couple of podcasts, we're going to talk about what does that work through you look like and what is it about so that you can see. And hopefully, I always uh, say this to people, you need to find your purpose and become purposeful. So the intention is that you and I will then locate our purpose and become purposeful so that we can be used and be effective for the kingdom of God. But the Bible says, the just shall live by faith, you walk by faith and not by sight.